United States government. On January 27, 2021, current President Joseph R. Biden Jr. issued a formal memorandum discussing scientific and technology-driven research detailing the United States federal government intentions to pursue, maintain, and produce scientific evidence-based policymaking. This is Survey 365 with you again. I have included a link directly from the White House Federal website um, dated for this memorandum. I bring you this information as an extension of SPSS in Motion Mondays. The director of this interagency task force position is to oversee application, operationalization, and thus applied methodologies across a full spectrum. This full spectrum is not limited to industries concerning labor, education, housing, etc. I am going to delve deep into some information regarding data and analytics pertaining to housing urban development. Uh, research concerning welfare recipients and programs from coast to coast and how this information is stored, retrieved, and used in the future to modify earlier findings to constantly control for predicated behavior along the lines of desired results. So in order to ensure scientific integrity, again, the purpose has to start good and end well. I love it. <laughs> now take time on your own to verify the information presented to you on these slides. This is going to go pretty fast. Um, this information details how the Director of the Office of Scientific Information and Technology and the Executive Branch again of the United States Government will oversee application of scientific technological processes of this task force. Now this task force is solely responsible for ensuring practices regarding engagements with federal employees and external contractors in relation to SPSS data collected procedures or methodologies applied and the findings. So HUD or Housing Urban Development applies SPSS in planning development and future development allocation for residential and sometimes commercial developments. And I say sometimes commercial developments because most of those developments are safeguarded in such a way to detach from HUD or again Housing Urban Development because HUD is not supposed to have a hand in commercial development, only residential, especially for the low income, moderate income, and those who want secured mortgages by, by way of different programs. And don't, don't quote me on all of that, but that's just um, a broad look at it. So now the same is, again, is for both residential and commercial development. Commercial developers have opportunities to produce two or three plans involving current developments and future developments simultaneously. What does this mean? When commercial developers, excuse me, commercial developers have an opportunity to seize a certain amount of land, most often they will work with local, meaning city, county, then state, governments to ensure that they have a certain amount of housing for people across demographics. Um, this is when you see major metropolitan development in or about venues, arenas, in downtown areas, historic districts, and the like. Um, just refer to the earlier presentation and you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about here. So, again, back to having the ability or opportunity to present uh, multiple development options. This usually spans 10, 20, 30, or 40 year plan. What does this mean? Um, there are people who have discussed earmarks in the past, and earmarks are just another way of saying welfare for well off developers, and they have the opportunity to come into areas deconstruct housing, demolish housing, or existing commercial properties. And this is why you see a lot of road developments. These road developments are some of the 
the modernized style for multifamily housing you see it um, on about college areas you see it for seniors this is when you go to cities like Nashville Atlanta Denver Colorado all of their surrounding suburbs and other areas and with this type of development you're going to see on the lower or ground level you will see a lot of eateries uh, commercial properties mostly burger joints cafes you may even see small gyms workout spaces or lease spaces for administrative settings because this is to encourage um, a dual or tri-level um, business under one roof and of course your second and or third floors begin the residential units these are the small compact buildings you're seeing popping up everywhere now um, back to the decade allotted period this means a temporary allowance for certain populations usually minority or moderately served communities these people are often allowed to inhabit these areas within a limited scope and to have a certain amount of resources for a few decades versus a desired area with expanded development remains unchanged but prosperous to give you an example of this and a which is <laughs> I think one of the best applications of this right now in the United States is when you look across the Atlanta, Marietta and Roswell major metropolitan areas in the small sectors in between um, of course about Atlanta around the uh, the Midtown station you see the commercial allocation for development there and it's fixed because you cannot change Atlanta now the way it's designed. The only way Atlanta is going to change, uh, maybe 40 years from now, there will be a lot of demolition. But if you look out in Marietta, which is Cobb County, you see, you see moderate development. But when you go further into those suburbs, Roswell, Alpharetta, you see little to no development. But what development you see is multi-million dollar and multi-billion dollar sections. You see a lot of space between developed sites and this allows for growth, prosperous growth in the future. And you don't see this in inner city um, areas where there is a dual or even a tri existing plan meaning in most of these areas where minorities or moderately served communities live um, within 30 40 years these areas are demolished redesigned and those populations are always redistributed elsewhere now in relation to HUD there are a group of editors who work with the uh, Committee on National Statistics, Division of Behavioral and Social Sciences and Education with the National Research Council. Now this specific panel um, manages the data and methods for measuring the effects of changes in social welfare programs. How does this relate to HUD? Specifically because they work alongside Health and Human Services from the East Coast to the West Coast encompassing communities within the North and South and the data and applications among welfare recipients. Okay, sounds like a lot. Don't worry. I've put the information on screen for you. Um, you can obtain this report by way of the Freedom of Information Act from the National Academy Press in Washington, D.C. Contact information is there on the slide for you. Now, um, the information from this panel, again, is by way of SPSS. This is SPSS in motion, and it reveals a relationship between how the mentioned task force federal employees, contractors, etc. all work together to produce information from certain groups, target populations, and how policy is implemented by way of science and technology to arrive at the desired results on behalf of the federal government. Onward to the United States Office of Personnel Management. It is led by current director Kieran Anhuja, now, as of March 2022, Director Huha states 
The mission of this office is to serve as a strategic partner to other agencies oriented toward collaboration, innovation, and solutions, embracing data and evidence informed policies and practices. Again, you see, you hear, hopefully, you read on your own the United States federal government direct involvement in specific research methodologies or experimentation to observe for, report on, and to modify and change existing procedures, practices, implement new ones to continuously obtain the desired results across demographics. Whereas the federal government also sets aside at least a billion dollars to achieve desired results from among certain groups why denying and limiting the same funding similar funding or desired funding for other groups within this country within this country and um, I've also made available a link for the Office of Personnel Management which is also um, the largest employer in this country the most employed people within one industry in this country um, is the healthcare industry or healthcare workers. So there's a a labor statistic for you. And I want you to understand that the Office of Personnel Management in the United States or OPM is the office that oversees every federal employee, entity, department, and thus the contractors. I close with information pertaining to the University of San Diego's multi multidisciplinary approach to political science application on domestic front and global pol- geopolitical approach to influence studying, applying, and modifying procedures across industries. And again, the University of California, it's San Diego works directly with the government and international governments. Um, along with this task force, you see a, num- a number of faculty and staff members across colleges and universities in the states and across the, the world. Thank you for your time. Follow up on this information. Have a great day.